A cameraman got it. There's joy on the UNO campus tonight because Mark Mayberry got a shot in the final seconds against Tulane that will be remembered for years. When I looked at the basket and I seen where I was, I say, this is good enough for me. It wasn't but six seconds on the clock anyway, you know, so I didn't want to waste a whole bunch of time. And, you know, so I say, this is good enough for me, so I let it go. The estimate was about 30 feet. What did it look like to you? Oh, about 50. Yeah. <laughs> so I looked at the, I looked at the hoop and you know it was a long ways away you know I said oh man <laughs> but anyway you know it looked like a pretty far shot you know so I don't really know how far it was but it looked quite a ways off. The moment you let it go, you said you knew. Felt good, buddy. Felt good. Felt good. When I let it go off like this, I said oh man. So I, when I I came down and it went through the nets. I jumped up higher the second time than I did the first time. I, I didn't think I would ever come down, you know. But, you know. Take you hours after the game to kind of come back to earth a little bit to, to get off the high? And I still ain't coming back. <laughs> I'm still there. I'm still up there saying, wow. So I ain't never did nothing that great, you know, as far as sports is concerned. That's the greatest play I ever made. I will be telling my kids, and I will be telling my grandkids about it, and everybody go, no, that's the greatest play I ever made. Ryan Green and his team did an amazing job in the final 48 seconds, coming from seven points behind, and when Mark won it, the coach went bananas. Well, I'll tell you, buddy, everything had to fall in place for us to win the game. Obviously, we're down seven points, 48 seconds left on the clock. We called timeout and said every basket that we make, it's a dead ball situation, so you take a timeout. And then that would give us the time to regroup, and, of course, they would go to the drawing board. Then we could press, and if we made another basket, of course, then we could we'd call another timeout. And, uh, you know, Coach Smith was uh, putting them in as I was talking to him, and it was really a team effort as far as our coaching staff was concerned. And uh, things just fell into place because, you know, it, it looked very bleak, to, to be honest. I, I'm sure that uh, many fans who left the game and uh, those of you who had to leave the game uh, were very disappointed to miss, uh, you know, the last 48 seconds. Once Cooper rebounded, though, you were out of timeouts then. You had to put the ball in play. That's right. And the major decision that we had to make as coaches was whether to to call a timeout then or not to call a timeout because uh, we could have got the ball raced across the half, set up a last second shot, but I found that uh, by the time you try to set up something, uh, it doesn't work out. So we decided to go with the timeout, hope that psychologically that would do the job for us, and it did, but we still had six seconds to get the, the ball down the court, and then Mark May uh, Mayberry, of course, he had that feeling, and then we had string music. you realize how bananas you won after the game? I was excited about the game. We, the adrenaline was flowing, and uh, it's turned into a real rivalry, and uh, it's a game that, that I really wanted very badly. Well, the Knicks are here tonight to meet the Jazz at the Superdome. They lost one in Atlanta last night in overtime.